In today's video for Alpha Universe, I'll share my camera settings for studio portrait photography. Let's jump right into it and talk about the first thing that I do when I'm doing a studio portrait session, which is setting the correct white balance. Because we're photographing people who have a wide range of different skin tones, we wanna make sure that they all look their absolute best. And a lot of that falls on using the right white balance settings before you begin. This step is actually pretty easy. If you're using a flash or a constant LED light, you'll wanna check in the specs to see what color temperature that they are tuned to. Most modern lights are set to daylight white balance. So in most situations, you could set your white balance to daylight and it should look pretty good. If for some reason daylight isn't looking perfect or it looks less than perfect for your given situation, I would recommend going to your manual white balance settings and dialing in a custom Kelvin value that matches the specific lights that you're working with. Another important thing that you wanna make sure you get right is to shoot in raw. If you're shooting in raw, you will have a lot more flexibility to change things like the white balance and post-production programs like Adobe Lightroom and Capture One. You could completely change the look of your entire image down to the exposure, the colors, pretty much everything about a photo could be corrected or stylized to look exactly the way you want. Now let's talk about our camera settings and this is specifically when you're using an off-camera flash. Studio photography is quite different from natural light photography in several ways, but one of the biggest differences is what we're looking to accomplish with our in-camera settings. When you're in natural light, you're making adjustments to your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, to get the best overall exposure for your image. In a studio environment, we're doing something totally different. Our in-camera settings should actually underexpose our entire image to the point that any lights that might be on inside of your shooting space, they aren't actually showing up in your exposure. In the beginning, it might seem counterintuitive to get rid of all of your available light, but there's a good reason for it. When you bring in your lights, whether it's one light or, I don't know, 10 lights, you'll know exactly how your lights are affecting your image and your exposure because they will be the only ones that are creating that exposure. This step doesn't have to be difficult. I have a general setting that works great in most studio portrait situations, and to use it, you have to make sure that you're in manual mode and that you change your in-camera exposure to the following. Your aperture can be set to F8, your shutter speed to 1 1 60th of a second, which is 1 slash 160 and not 1 slash 60. That would give you a different exposure than what we're aiming for. Your ISO value should be set to whatever the lowest native ISO is for your camera. In most situations, that would be 100. So once you've dialed in those settings without having your flash trigger or anything on your camera, just point your lens at your subject and see if you're able to see anything. You could even take a photo at that point and what you're hoping to see is a completely underexposed image, meaning you shouldn't see your subject or your background. You should see a completely black, completely underexposed image. Now, if for some reason you could still see your subject, all you have to do is narrow down your aperture from F8 to F9 to F11, so on and so forth until you get a totally underexposed shot. Once you have that done, you are almost at the finish line. This next step may or may not be necessary depending on which lighting system that you're using, but I'd recommend setting this up just in case you run into this. Go into your menu and go to your setup options, then custom key slash dial set, specifically the one with the camera icon next to it, and then pick whichever custom button that you'd like. I'm using the C1 button here on my Alpha 7CR, so I will pick that. And from there, you'll want to look for your live view display select option and set that to whatever custom button it is that you picked. Pressing that button will now toggle live view display off and on, which might come in handy for you. Most flash triggers made for Sony cameras will actually disable live view when you uh, turn on the remote. But if for some reason, if it doesn't, you could simply press that custom button to turn it off when you're shooting your studio portraits. Another thing you'll want to do is to double check and see if your camera has a wireless flash option in the menu and just make sure that that is turned to on. From there, I can put my flash trigger on my camera, 
and I can move on to the next step, which is to dial in the flash power. Since we used our in-camera settings to underexpose our scene, we could take a test shot of our subject and see if the light output and the placement looks good. If it's too bright, just turn down the power of the light and vice versa if you need more output. I recommend doing this with one light at a time if you're doing a shoot with multiple lights, just to make sure that you get everything balanced nicely. Keep in mind that at this point, you don't need to make any adjustments to your actual camera settings unless the lighting in your shooting environment somehow gets brighter. Studio photography is a lot of fun, and if you have any other questions about it, let me know in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as we have new videos coming out all the time. And I've got a playlist full of my favorite videos here on the channel that can help you improve your photos and your videos. Check them out, and I'll see you next time.